बाहर नहीं तोड़ा करते So, I have just witnessed three living legends uh, on the big screen and I have not been able to stop gushing over it for days on end and one of them is someone who I'm extremely fond of is the one and only Shabana Azmi ji so thank you so much for joining me Shabana ji on Film Me Show Me it's always such a pleasure to have you It is a great pleasure to be talking with you again Anuj Wonderful look we caught up uh, about this I mean we caught up about uh, what's love got to do with it earlier this year and mm. we have spoken at length about your tryst with karan johar for so many times you've interacted with him i think he panned you for, uh, you panned him for kuch kuch hota you sort of gave him a little dart <laughs> of that my name is no, karan I, i didn't pan him i didn't pan him i rang him up from london after i watched the film and i asked him a couple of questions that he was completely baffled by right Okay, and then you were also approached for my name is Khan. Thanks to IMDb, I worked that one out. Uh, and now finally, you did a film with him. I mean, tell me about this journey that you've had with Karan, and why? Why did Rock Your Rani, you know, specifically appeal to you as well? Well, I've known uh, Karan from the time he was a chubby young kid, because his father Yash Johar uh, was one of Javed's favorite. people they worked in some films together and uh, <clears throat> so i used to see uh, karan then and um, so i've had a kind of although we hadn't worked together for all this time it, it's something that has been easy and uh, then when i was approached for this film i was um, surprised by it and i'm not easily surprised and um, so i thought that this was a chance worth taking what it required from my side was a complete uh, willing suspension of uh, disbelief and i really didn't know whether it would work out and so uh, the salute must go to karan for believing in it so completely and i was just talking to him recently and uh, he said people are so taken up by that track that they've been saying that oh there should be an entire film about uh, this couple so yeah. obviously it's very heartwarming mm for sure absolutely i mean i think when i saw your performance uh, you know the one thing that i've always said about you as an actor is the subtle nuances you bring so it is even in the sort of climax scene where you know you sort of have that word with your granddaughter and say yes this is what happened with me and i do not regret it again i felt like so many of the characters you played especially whether it's earth whether it's masoom so many of them seem to really see pin to uh jamini would you say that a lot of your previous experiences of playing really strong yeah. silent but resilient characters have really helped you with this performance too well i think every every uh, character that you play helps you because somewhere it uh, the process of inhabiting that character's world um gets added to your experience of life and i've always said that for an actor her resource base needs to be life itself and when you play these characters not only do you add to them but you also you add to them by your experience and they add to you by giving you a chance to inhabit that world so although i had never thought consciously of uh, jamini in rocky or rani as being an extension of any of the other characters that yeah. i had played there was certainly a certain dignity in her a certain poise in her which i think was written into the script so really the um, the credit must go to the writer and the director but um, for me to do that was important because i didn't want to play her like a victim at yes, all exactly and so 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 in that moment when she tells her granddaughter that you know the choice is yours are mm-hmm. you going to be a lonely old woman or are you going to give your life a chance mm-hmm. that to me is the the way the character evolves and is very nice it is beautiful <laughs> it was so beautiful but i think for you when 
you know the most mm-hmm. beautiful thing and i think my parents after we watched it we were having this discussion is that it's interesting how jaya ji is actually bengali um and she's actually playing a punjabi character yeah uh, yet the sort of virtues you both have as artists either of you could have played that role either of you could have played dhan lakshmi and jamini respectively and i think that was the beauty of it i think for you though as an art actor who obviously has worked with dharam ji and jaya ji for you know in in several projects before how do you feel like when you work with them at this point in their of of your career as well and seeing the young you know sort of generation of actors emerge how did that make you feel at that point in time well obviously when you see when you see the energy between uh, ranveer and alia it is so infectious and mm-hmm. it is so uh, beautiful it was an absolute joy to watch them in their scenes and along with that came a certain gravitas in the scenes that i had with uh, dharam ji although it was romantic and all that there was a certain gravitas that mahesh bhat came to me in the interval and said that's what surprising about this film because you go to see this film thinking of it as a typical karan johar film and suddenly this gravitas of this track takes you by surprise because you didn't expect it at all see jaya is a person that i've admired a lot both as an actor and as a person i have a very easy relationship with her i just i just wish we had more scenes uh, together um but it was lovely the little time that we had together and i think she's very very convincing in the part mhm absolutely aur aapko yaad hoga jab humne wo interview ki thi what's love ke liye मैंने आपसे बोला था कि नोस्टालजिया बहुत ज्यादा एक सेलेबल कमोडिटी बन चुकी है अब हिंदी सिनेमा में एंड आई थिंक सिनेमा में जनरली आई थिंक द फिल्म अ फिल्म लाइक दिस यू नो व्हिच ऑब्वियसली हैज दैट फ्लेवर ऑफ अ कमर्शियल हिंदी फिल्म बट देन आल्सो टैकल सम रियली इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स इन अ वे व्हिच इज नॉट यू नो शविंग इट डाउन योर थ्रोट एंड वेरी प्रीची अम हाउ डू यू थिंक नाउ दिस विल रियली यू नो पुश दैट बेंचमार्क नाउ फॉर यू नो because we've been having so infotainment films for a while now anyway but how do you think this will really kind of push that boundary even more in terms of the big scale hindi you know pod boiler films which also educate the audiences you know uh, javed liked the film very much and he said that this film uh, you know introduces a different genre in mm-hmm. hindi films and that's a huge statement to yeah. make for Uh, a successful writer uh, who's seen it all for so many years now to say and i think that is a strong observation because uh, there have been topics hitherto considered anathema anathema to uh, mainstream cinema and karan has handled them uh, tackled them head on and uh, the reaction particularly to the girls to the women when they <clears throat> for instance when the mother says she's no longer going to take the oppression or the daughter saying that is so incredible because people are ready you see often times mainstream filmmakers want to play it safe because they are not in touch with what the audience is ready for so even when i did a film like earth mm. you know distributors had said it's a wonderful film but please change the end because nobody will accept um a uh, wife turning down her husband after she has after he has apologized mm. but the film did become a huge success so i think it's very important that this film and the success of this film and the appreciation of mm. the film Karan says he's never received so much appreciation from the press, so he doesn't know uh, what's hit him really, and uh, that will encourage uh, mainstream filmmakers to not only make floppy films, to not only make action films, but to deal with topics which are real. I believe, Anuj, that if you have to bring change through cinema, it has to happen through mainstream cinema. because that's what the audiences are watching when you when you tackle these issues in what is called the independent cinema or the 
parallel cinema, you're preaching to the already converted. True. Yeah. Literally. So this, hopefully, will open up space to talk about issues that are of importance. Absolutely. Very, very well said. And I think also or what I must say is that, you know, I mean, I watched Garden's interview that he did with Anupama recently, and it was really beautiful, actually. I, I was quite, imp- uh, you know, intrigued by the sort of insights he had. And I think he was obviously saying that the film quite obviously pays tribute to Yash Chopra, right? I mean, you could just tell. I mean, even the references of the coffee house. I mean, it was just giving me dag. It was giving me so many kabi kabi, so many yeah. Those movies. And it's interesting you talk about mainstream because obviously when, you know, of course, when the, you know, sort of emerging stage of your career was obviously through parallel cinema. I mean, you are one of the pioneers of that. But, you know, did you ever... Aapke kabhi khwaab te ke maybe Gya Chopra ki heroine banu, maybe wo commercial cinema? Nein. Nein thi. Nein, kabhi bhi. Kabhi bhi nahi tha. But don't forget that I was uh, one of the first people uh, who did both mainstream cinema and oh. parallel cinema. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. It, you know, I had I had Fatira, which was a huge success. Then, of course, everybody knows about Parvarish and Amarak Paranthani and what have you. So I have been doing both kinds of cinema. And I was warned in the beginning that, you know, if you try to um, swim in both boats, you're going to really just fall down. But I'm happy that it happened. And... Um, so I'm I'm really, really pleased with this. I think something that Anurag Kashyap said to me was very interesting. He said, you know, I give it to I give it to Karan because he has had the guts to break the stereotype that we make up in our heads to cast you in a romantic role like this. It is not something that people would do easily. The fact that he was able to do that uh, just shows up to me as a filmmaker that I'd better, I'd better cast uh, with more courage. Mm-hmm. I think that's a terrific thing to say. Mm-hmm. And do you know when you talk about breaking barriers and breaking boundaries? Uh, I think I remember when we were at the press screening when uh, Abhina Jao Chorkar was first uh, playing. And obviously, uh, that kiss you had with Dharamji, I mean, you cannot, I cannot tell you how even when I went to see the in the theatres when it commercially released, the theatre erupted with applause. <laughs> you have no idea that atmosphere jo mahol create hua tha na, it was just electric. I think, you know, and for a while, I think we in Indian cinema, especially back then, we were so... I don't know how to say it, but we were, it was stigmatized for, you know, no reason or rhyme because obviously kissing is a very natural thing. Emotions like that is very natural. Um, so do you think by also, uh, by also that, uh, by do, having the scene, do you think this will also encourage more perhaps legends like yourself to also embrace that side to them, which is already happening to an extent as well with some of the films we're seeing. But do you think that's also a way to kind of encourage you know, to embrace things that are natural and not stigmatize it any longer as well. No, no, the whole film is about not stigmatizing, not only about the seniors, but the entire film takes Mm -hmm. up issues that we should not stigmatize because that, in fact, is not the reality of society, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't imagine that a whole lot of films are now suddenly going to erupt with seniors kissing in that in them, not anything of that kind. But what it has done is shown you how important nostalgia is and how important the Hindi film song and um, people actually singing it, lip syncing it is. Mm. I always feel that, you know, if you ask me what sets us apart from world cinema is that we sing our songs. That's the way we've always done it. If you look back from Parsi theatre, that's what we've been doing. Now, in our attempt to make ourselves more global, we have stopped having our characters singing songs. And I think that shouldn't be, because we should be able to do what is our core. And our core is that we sing songs. And when we sing songs, we sing them. And then when you hear them, there's a certain nostalgia, a certain memory attached to it. And 
I think if we start doing sing songs again, then songs will get back their lyrics. Songs will get back their melody. That I feel sad about, that we're losing that. But even if you look at any of the music shows, for in instance, why is it that people are always singing old songs? Yeah. So I think it's time for us to, to get them back. Oh, again, totally agree. And I think that's the essence. And I think this is what Rocky Orani does. <clears throat> like just hearing that medley also when you and Dharamji are out and, you know, and then the, obviously Rocky and Rani are flirting somewhere else. Uh, you know, that whole sequence was just so beautiful it brought back that flavor that i think a lot of us were missing i think that's why the film has really worked largely but i must also touch on a topic which i think we may have spoken about some time ago but i'm going to bring it back because i think it's very relevant um ageism i think has always been a very huge issue i think in in hindi cinema i think indian cinema cinema generally um i remember there was a film that was headlined by uh, two young actresses uh, some time back and there was a lot of conversation about why actors who have experience were not cast in that particular role especially because it was that age bracket um do you feel now with the um with the sort of work that we're seeing on ott as well do you feel like now ageism is now becoming a secondary conversation or do you think it's still quite rampant and you know still needs to be addressed hands-on and what do you think can be done to really address it do you think See, there is definitely ageism within the film industry. And a lot of it is also understandable because when younger people come, then they want to work with younger people. It's, it's, it's quite, I mean, it's understandable. So what is happening is a lot of people who are very talented and very experienced are simply not getting work, whether they are cinematographers, whether they are production designers, whether they are writers, because the younger generation only wants to work with the younger generation. Now, in our times, this was not the case, because I remember I was working at the same time in a Mohan Kumar film as I was working with Shekhar Kapoor. I had no qualms about working with uh, people much older. Today, there has been a definite, definite uh, hesitation yeah. in working yeah. with older people, knowing fully well that they are talented, because mm. there's a certain comfort level, I think, working with your age group. And in that, a lot of very talented people are being left out. Now, this, of course, I'm talking about the crew. When it comes to the cast, we've always had senior actors, but we've had senior actors in certain kinds of roles. And it's interesting that now we will see, um, I think, break those barriers. Hmm. For sure. It's like if we look at Zoya's films, Zoya Akhtar's movies, um, Dil Dharak Nido, I mean, there were so many parallels I, I drew out from Rocky and Rani when it comes to the family dynamics and the sort of uh, character strands that, you know, Poonam Randhava has with Shafali Shah's character in that film. It's honestly, it was so interesting to really see that. Dysfunctional family dramas always make a compelling watch. You've mm -hmm. always understood the crux of human dysfunctionality, whether it's mentally, emotionally, physically, or even through relationships as well. But I think now, having done the films that you have done in the past and doing Rocky and Rani, how do you feel it's perhaps influenced, changed, or even maintained your opinion on human dysfunctionality and familial dynamics as well? All families are dysfunctional. All families at some point or the other. And I think accepting that is good because otherwise we have these illusions of a perfect family. And when you confront the fact that they are not perfect in the way you imagine, then it comes as a huge shock. <clears throat> but I don't know of any large family that is not dysfunctional. And I think it's a reality of life because when you get so many people together who are bound together by love, but also are people in their own 
right and uh, find it difficult to work with the parents or find it difficult to work with children because we've been fed on an illusion. Hmm. Absolutely. And I think uh, one thing that I have to say, which again, uh, you know, in, in Rock and Rani, is that a lot of a lot of people have said whenever I've discussed and dissected the film, is that it was there was grace, I think, with all three of you, with Jayaji, Dharamji and yourself. That element of grace, I think, was something which was very palpable. Where do you think that grace comes from? Because clearly, I mean, you know, yeah, matlab create nahi kiya ja sakta, like aura create nahi kiya ja sakta. You either have it or you don't. You know, it's not something that I have uh, consciously done. I think Germany, in the way she's written, uh, gives me as an actor the space to play her with grace. I mean, a lot of people have talked about about the grace with which it has been done. But I think it comes really from the writing because if it had been written in a completely different way, then however much grace you might have in real life, you might not have been able to impart to the character. So I really think it's in the writing and the way the directors handle the affection and the warmth with which uh, Karen has handled that track. Mm-hmm. That comes through the actors. Mm-hmm. But it certainly is a very exciting time for you because obviously from Rocky and Rani to now going straight into Gumar, um, which is obviously our Balki's film. I saw the posters yesterday. Oh, wow. I mean, what a lovely story it seems like. I mean, a physically challenged woman, you know, aspiring to really excel in the field of sports. Um, I mean, tell, talk to me a bit about 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 that about your role in that film and working especially with another visionary filmmaker that is of course R Balki. You know there could not be two roles more chalk and cheese like Germany and the woman I play in uh, R Balki's Gumar. She's also an interesting part because she is a cricket lover and which is completely in contradiction to the kind of person. But when you see her, you know, she's in a nondescript sari. She wears specs. She ties her hair up in a bun. And it comes as a complete surprise that she is so involved in cricket. So there also in that film, the family, uh, Sayami's family plays a very important and interesting part, but not dysfunctional, instead mm. completely supportive. Sayumi has done an excellent job. I mean, not just physically, which has been very, very tough for her, but also emotionally. And um, it's it's a film, which is a bulky film, of course, but mm. it hits all your emotional points uh, with warmth. Mm -hmm. This might sound very immodest, but I take it for granted. I take it for granted that uh, I am, as an actor, a versatile actor, and that people would cast me in different kind of uh, parts because they feel that I would be able to do justice to them. But it comes because a change is happening within the Hindi film industry and different kinds of parts are being written. The filmmaker is struggling, even with the mainstream cinema or the independent cinema, how to get more viewership, but deal with subjects which are not just surface. So in that quest, I'm happy. I think I've been at the right place at the right time. For sure. And I also, one thing I have to say is that, you know, Rocky and Rani, for example, is quite different to the flavor of K3G in that sense, because that was pretty much pandering towards the NRI audiences, right? I mean, whereas I feel with Rocky and Rani, what it does, it kind of has that grandeur. It has that really huge canvas. But at the same time, it's also addressing topics which really 
introspect on the Indian audience. You know, and I feel films generally, Renaissance, Kohosi, one may or not agree with certain films and, you know, where they the ideologies that they may have, but they do kind of address certain things, right? So it's interesting, right, to kind of see this introspection happening. Do you think that's also because now India as a country, we as Indians are now, in a way, reached a satisfaction where we're not having to pander to the West now for validation? Do you think that's that's happening or do you think there's still room for improvement? No, I don't think it's just pandering to the West, but realizing that we also have a large market and the West also realizes that India is a large market. Now, I believe as the world shrinks and becomes a global village, it is important that cultures are expressed within their own paradigms rather than um, rather than pressures from the West deciding how the East should be. And that is a very happy thing to happen. That's why I feel when we talk about the crossover film, why do we shy away from having songs in a crossover film? It's perfectly possible. I think the only thing that we need to rework is our length. Our length, if we shorten our length, but tell the stories that we want to in any which way we want to, I think uh, the world as a market is ready to accept that. So it's a really interesting and challenging time. Mm -hmm. And even if we look at uh, the maternal roles as well, I mean, of course, the way you and uh, J.R.G. performed was was brilliant. But even if we look at actresses like Sheba Chadda, who's been phenomenal in sort of championing yeah. the young mother but also not just a mother but also embracing what they want you know as individuals I think it's really wonderful so do you now think as well I mean in that stage as well that we're kind of seeing this shift as well in terms of the maternal roles are also written I think as the dialogue is uh, shifting and uh, the women's movement is getting so much primacy people are realizing that with the stereotypes that we have played, because we have believed that is what the public would like. I think all filmmakers, even within the mainstream genre, are realizing that um, the, the appendage to the hero, the girl who was just there to sing songs and do nothing, she is no longer interesting for the audience. They mm. want to be real people and yet, not as realistically as you would in main, in uh, parallel cinema. Mm. So this, so it's it, it's a time for analysis and it's a time for change. And what I like about Rocky and Rani is Karan's complete unabashed expression of mainstream cinema, which he has loved, mm. you know all out there and yet within that he is tackling subjects that need to be talked about true absolutely now look you i feel like after watching this film you are born to literally also do amazing roles in like grandiose films like i am eager to see you in a sanjali love and sali film i cannot tell you how much many of us are but if you were offered a sort of role that was obviously grandeur, because I know that you also are very um, particular in the roles you choose because it has to have significance. You cannot just play a Dukhyari Ma type role, right? Because I know you wouldn't accept it. So how would, how, what sort of roles do you think would really, you know, jay you on? I think especially when it comes to the grandeur magnum opuses, like maybe how Rocky and Rani was. I can't answer that. Uh, question. But the thing is, I am open as an actor to work in different kinds of films, provided it interests me. And so this this sort of hesitation that people had that uh, Shabana Azmi can only be taken in a role that is very strong and um, that is issue-based, it's not necessary. Mm. I mean, that I would do, but if I was offered something really within the mainstream cinema, which didn't conflict, that's very important, that it shouldn't conflict with my own 
ideals, then I'll be very happy to do it. And the grandeur is, um, is a great uh, genre. I mean, after all, <clears throat> I don't know whether you watched it, but <clears throat> during the uh, pandemic, I did a web series called Empire. Mm, in which yeah. I, so uh, that was also very interesting. And it was done by Nikhil uh, Advani and... It was wonderful. It's interesting to do that because I think you need to, as an actor, the kind of actor that I've been, I need to push the envelope. Because in a sense, to have that kind of part and to make it believable is a little more difficult than having a very realistic part in a very realistic film, which you can believe. For sure, absolutely. Well, I think, look, on a bit of a final note, I mean, a bit of a candid question, really. But um, I think seeing the Shabana Azmi of today, who is as poetic as ever, as artistic as ever, and as bolder as ever, which is great, um, how would you look back at your younger self, maybe who was, you know, growing up, uh, wanting to become an actress? What would you What would you say to that young girl growing up right now? You know, I have been very very lucky because I passed out with gold medal uh, for best student in acting from the film institute and uh, the next day literally I was shooting for Parine, Kantilal Kathod's Parine. Before that I had already signed a film by K. Abbas and then Ankur became my first film which met uh, with so much success both critically and commercially. So I didn't have to struggle. I didn't have to try and find my meteor. And I was fortunate that there were filmmakers like Sham uh, Benegal who were looking at characters that you wouldn't find normally, particularly women's characters. And so because I was the right place at the right time, I managed to get those parts, which I wouldn't have got in mainstream cinema. Oh, wow. That is wonderful. That is so, so wonderful. Well, look, Shabanaji, it's always so good to have you on Filmy Show Me, really. I cherish all our conversations. It's always so insightful. You know, I think I always enjoy, I mean, you know, just speaking with you is is like this. I mean, watching oh. the big screen, yeah, I mean, it was, honestly, I was in tears, like literally throughout oh. the film, because... You know, for us growing up, like, see, even though I'm like a 90s born guy, but for me, I've always related with the legendary songs, you know, with, the, of course, the songs that were referenced in the film. I mean, it was magical, really. It was so magical. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you all created this masterpiece. So thank you so much for joining me. It was so lovely to have you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you Bye. So Bye-bye.